Welcome to the JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge. Raise your hand. I have a feeling a lot of you have been here before, but is this anybody's first time at the refuge? How about anybody's first time back here since Hurricane Ian? Anybody? Okay, we've got some hands. All right, so thank you all for being here, and again, thank you so much for your patience. So I am Ranger Jess, and I am so happy and so grateful to see all of you here for our kickoff lecture, Happy Wellness Week 2023. This is part of, again, this bigger initiative that we are continuing at the refuge to bring wellness um, to all of you. So in addition to our conservation mission, we also value the connection that humans have to nature. Okay, so now more than ever, we see our planet needs us just as much as we need our planet. And this connection is really what lies at the core um, of Wellness Week. We want to provide opportunities for individuals to learn, connect to their environment and each other. So I would also like to thank, he's not here right now, but Southwest Florida Complex um, Project, project leader for the Southwest Florida Refuge Complex, Kevin Godsey. He's not here right now, but um, he's been a big supporter of promoting this. And I also want to welcome and thank and bring up Ranger Tony Westland, or at least stand up for us. Thank you. Okay. She's been a supporter from the very beginning when I started as an intern. And I also will welcome and introduce Christina Shaw from the Dean Darling Wildlife Society to say a few words. Thank you, Jess. Hi, everybody. I'm Christina with the Dean Darling Wildlife Society, the Friends of the Refuge Group. There's some other society women here as well. Thank you for joining us. We are so proud to be a sponsor of Wellness Week again this year, along with our other sponsors, LCEC and Florida Arts and Culture. If you are not already signed up, please join our Ding on the Wing subscriber list. There is a sign-up sheet as you exit the room, and we will put a, a message in your inbox every Thursday during season, and you'll get all the news about Ding Darling. We're also very excited to announce some new Mindful Moments podcasts that we just recorded, and Jessica uploaded to our Spotify account. And so, in addition to the podcast that we have at the Bailey Tract Mindfulness Trail, we have them now for the refuge. So there's a QR code back there that you can scan to access those. So please take advantage of those recordings. Jess. All right. Thank you so much, Christina. Definitely check all of that out. And now I would like to introduce today's speaker. So, welcoming Dr. Joe Blanda. Dr. Joe Blanda is a recently retired orthopedic surgeon with a passion to help people better experience the health benefits of nature. A life member of the Sierra Club, he now sits on the executive committee for the Portage Trail Group of the Sierra Club, promoting inclusion, sustainable living, and environmental awareness. He is a board member of the Conservancy for the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Dr. Blanda spends much of his season next to the Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge, where he immerses himself in nature and leads walks on the mindfulness trail at the Baby Tract. You can learn more about Dr. Blanda by sticking around and talking with him yourself afterwards. You can also visit his website at www dot nature hyphen can heal dot com and again just find him or one of us afterwards if we can get you that written down so without further ado so grateful to have you joe thank you everybody for being here and welcoming dr joe blanda thanks jess so uh do i need to hold this and speak into this yes, and i need to squeeze the button no, just like that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for being here today. Um, and uh, and I, I'd like to thank the Ding Darling Wildlife Society and the staff of the Planning Committee for inviting me to share a message that I'm very passionate about. And my message today is that nature can heal 
and we need to get a dose of nature therapy here on Sanibel. And as I'll explain, it's pretty easy to do that right here at Ding Darling. In my presentation, I hope to inspire, I hope to motivate you to become an activist for your own self-care, to become a volunteer to help in the recovery of Sanibel Island, and to become a stronger environmentalist to help fight the battle against climate change. All these things to help save the island for future generations. I want you to live a purposeful life I want you to be healthier and happier and to have more resilience for what may come in the future. My main goal in this presentation is to help you understand that nature is one of the most powerful tools for self-care. Nature can help with the recovery from post-traumatic stress. You know, when I was driving across the causeway yesterday, just got into the state, uh, I'd been here several times. I'd been here for 30 days right after the hurricane, but I've been back since then. But every time I come, I'm reminded that, wow, I, I have some post-traumatic stress. And, uh, and turning to the nature out here is very helpful. Dr. Oda Sessi will speak about resilience this Saturday, so if you're around, you should catch her talk. You'll hear a perspective from a psychologist an author of children's books, and a fellow mindful birder. So I was fortunate to grow up in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains in a coal mining town where I spent all day, most every day, out in nature and realized at a young age that that brought me a lot of comfort and joy and solace. And uh, I went to college nearby and a Jesuit priest there introduced me to meditation way back then and actually gave me a copy of a book written by Thich Nhat Hanh. Anyone know who Thich Nhat Hanh is? Oh, okay, we got, a, we got a mindful audience. He's a Buddhist monk and a very prolific writer. And uh, so, so way back in college kind of started my interest in, in mindfulness and, and, and conservation. And throughout my life as, as a father, a citizen, an orthopedic surgeon, I would immerse myself in nature and I found that brought peace and serenity and I gravitated toward activities that were mindful such as fly fishing and solo backpacking and nature photography and eventually like many of you I ended up here. Um, as I said earlier I, I, I was fortunate to be able to buy a house here when they were still affordable 25 years ago. and. Uh, and it's been an ideal spot for nature therapy. So for my family and I, it's been just a wonderful place to come and, and get our nature fix and to practice mindfulness in nature. And like all of you in the audience, adversity hit me. Uh, it hit me hard in 2013 when my then 17-year-old son was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. And I'm grateful that I was able to learn many lessons from my son during his three-year battle. Uh, and, and here's an example. Uh, we were walking on Bowman Beach about a week before he passed, and he said, Dad, Dad, look, look at the bird. And so, you know, I'm lo looking out there for a pelican or a tern diving. I said, where? No, look, right there, the bird. Look at the neat bird. And, I, you know, my mind, I, I wasn't focused. I wasn't being mindful. So he pulls out his iPhone. He snaps a picture, and he, and he points on his screen. Well, look, here's the wings. Here's the head. Here's the tail. Just an example of, you know, someone being mindful with someone who was not being mindful. So Joe and I and my family and I continued through his three-year battle coming down here and spending time at our favorite spots and seeing the beautiful sights, getting nourishment that nature can offer a family faced with cancer. Uh, after Joe was diagnosed, he made several YouTube videos to try and tell his story in a way that would help others. Had 20,000 people following him pretty quickly. 
one of his videos, he read a quote from an author who wrote this book. And a couple days later, some long-haired cardiologist knocks on her door and introduces himself as Dr. Terry Gordon. And that started a very long friendship with Terry and my son and, uh, and myself. And, and the book was very helpful in our journey, and it still is to this day. The title of the book is No Storm Lasts Forever, but another storm did hit, and it hit this past September, and, uh, and we all know the ravage that Hurricane Ian hit us with. Uh, I got on the island just a few days after the storm, and I witnessed firsthand the chaos it created both on the island and in our minds. Disasters tend to bring out the best in people and sometimes the worst. And I saw plenty of both. And I was lucky to have a friend here who reminded me to breathe and focus and focus on the good things. Good things such as my neighbor, Diane, who had the foresight to park her truck on high ground. And when she knew I was coming, she offered that I could use her truck. So she drove way over from the East Coast to give me the key. So I had one of the few vehicles on the island immediately after the storm to help people. So those acts of kindness are things that help build the resilience in me and, and in, in all of us. We have all experienced things like that. So. I then started to notice the resilience in nature, the recovery in nature. Started this come back rather quickly. And so what do I mean by mindful time in nature? And, and nature can heal. And, and, and how can mindful time in nature help us recover from post-traumatic stress? Well, it sure does for me. And so to experience the health benefits of nature, you just need to open your senses while you're out in nature. You need to slow down. You need to focus on breathing and be attentive. It's best done quietly, probably best done alone or with a quiet friend. And for a good introduction to it, join Jess or Christina as they do mindful nature walks here year round. Let's try for a minute. I'm going to ask you guys, let's see if I can pull this off, Mr. Technology here. I'm going to ask you guys to close your eyes for a second and picture yourself on your favorite beach walking toward the sunset. And you open your sense of hearing. Now, you may not realize it, but your blood pressure probably started to drop, and calming hormones probably started to get released in your body. Stress hormones probably started to drop. It can happen that quickly when you're being mindful and, and, and taking in the sights and the sounds in nature. So how else can you find this mindfulness in nature? using your senses, quieting your mind. You need to be able to turn off the monkey talk that we all have in our minds. 90% of our awake moments, we have this chaos in our minds. And you need to learn how to turn that off, and nature is a good way to do that, being in nature. You need to turn off yesterday's bad news. You need to turn off Fox News. You need to put aside that stressful to-do list. Focus on your breath, invite your senses to be attentive, and you use your sense of sight to notice the patterns in the wings of birds, the curves, the shades. You want to notice more than, oh, it's just another egret. You want to notice the finer things in nature, the feather patterns, the blending colors. You want to take time to notice how our neighbors feed 
Notice how fragile their food sources are. Be still, quiet, patient, calm, and your blood pressure will drop. Your stress hormones will decrease. Your calming hormones will increase. Use your sense of smell. When you're outside, sniff like a dog. And those scents that you will inhale through your nose, you might not even smell them, but those chemicals that all living plants put off actually cause a release of natural killer cells in our bodies. Natural killer cells help fight infection like COVID, and they help fight cancer. So being out in nature and smelling those chemicals, and unfortunately our sense of smell has diminished to where we don't even know we're breathing in all these wonderful scents. A pine tree would be one example. If you smell the scent from pine tree, um, that, those are the chemicals that have been shown to cause the release of natural killer cells. So when out in nature, another way to do it is you reach out and you use the sense of touch. Feel a leaf, feel a tree trunk. Notice fractal patterns. Those repetitive patterns like a fern or the patterns in certain leaves. Studies again show that when you're looking at fractal patterns, all of those good healthy chemicals are released in your body. Good things happen in your physiology. Bad things kind of tend to go away. Be mindful out in nature. Don't be out there making noise, talking to people. That's important. Go out and socialize, do walks with your friends, but do a couple special mindfulness immersions in nature a week. Well, it's not working too good. I had some sound on here, but uh, my point was uh, in this experience with an otter, there were birds singing, there was water sound, there was the sound of the otter sniffing. And, and if your senses are open, you're, you're picking up on all those things as opposed to just seeing an otter. So you want to appreciate those moments of awe those special moments. Maybe capture them with your iPhone and create your own little photo diary that you can look at on a rainy day and be reminded of cool things you've seen outdoors. When you're out in nature, take time to reflect. Be present in the moment. And if you're attentive and not texting like I was, on Wildlife Drive this day, when my son hollered out, Dad, Dad, is that one of those rare birds? If you're attentive, you might see something unique, like, like our mangrove cuckoo. So be reminded of the resilience you see in nature, the compassion, the reciprocity. Studies show that mindful time in nature strengthens the pillars of resistance, of resilience, and reminds us we are not what it's all about. We're rather small and rather insignificant. It's not all about us. It's not all about me. So there are over a thousand published research studies that confirm the health benefits of nature. Richard Louvre uh, published his first book on nature deficit disorder. And unfortunately, we all know someone who suffers from that. Um, this is a helpful book, a helpful guide uh, for, for ideas on getting your family and kids out in nature. This is a research article, a tribute to one of my mentors, a physician from Japan who back in the early 80s recognized that Buddhist monks are extremely healthy despite being kind of portly and never exercising. And so they did a lot of research studies on why that was. And, it became obvious that they were mindful and they were spending time out in nature. So he went on and his team started doing research studies that proved that people who are out in nature have measurable levels of healthy hormones, healthy chemicals in their body compared to people who were in the city. For example, one study, 
he walked a group of people through the forest that had a lot of pine scent. And he measured all these blood tests and, and the calming hormones were way elevated, the stress hormones were way decreased, the natural killer cells were way elevated. And then he compared it to a similar group of people that walked through a beautiful part of the city and they didn't have those changes in their body. So Dr. Lee's published multiple studies and, and his team continues to do that. The research on nature therapy is robust in other countries. It's not being embraced in our country because no one's quite figured out how to make money on it yet. <laughs> and it's been in the press. You've probably all seen an article in one of the popular magazines. Uh, and, and, and again, to give credit to Japan, in 36 of their national parks, they have designated nature and forest therapy trails that are staffed full-time every day by trained forest therapy guides. So you can go to one of these national parks and you can do a guided walk. They even you know, check your blood pressure. They do things. Uh, and this is going on in Finland, in, in South Korea, a lot of countries. And we have one here now. We have a mindfulness trail, a self-guided mindfulness trail, and we have some folks leading trail uh, guides here. So I think we're starting a trend here in this country. So I have two prescriptions. I have two nature prescriptions today. My first is a prescription to the island itself. Unfortunately, our wonderful natural paradise is going to have to continue to cry out for help. And we need to let each red tide, each dead fish on the beach, and each storm remind us, inhabitants of Sanibel and inhabitants of Florida in this country, that we all need to do more. We need to recognize that our environment needs our help and we need to help nature heal from the damage we have inflicted on it. So, you know, I know I'm speaking to the choir with you folks, but, you know, don't sit back and expect others to do all the work. Don't wait for others to fight the good fight. We can't leave it up to the government or technology. Each of us needs to try to do more. Talk to five non-believers. Write five more letters to politicians. If you know someone who kind of doesn't believe that we have some problems facing our environment, talk them into watching this movie and ask them if they want to be one of the people at the end of the movie that jumps on the spaceship to fly to a better planet. Help those people get outside and help them appreciate nature and that will be doing them a big favor. Now, what is my nature prescription to you? Well, nature offers us the opportunity to practice mindfulness. And with as little as 20 minutes of mindful time outside, you can be physically healthier and mentally stronger. And all it takes is setting aside some self-care time for yourself. Put yourself first. It could be as simple as looking out at a tree outside your window, as opposed to staring at the screen. Or it could be noticing the clouds as you sit in a traffic jam on the causeway as opposed to cussing at the guy in front of you. <laughs> and to those of you who have the boots on the ground and you're doing the good stuff, thank you for what you are doing. Pat yourself on the back. Embrace the gratitude that you own. Try to show others how healthy the feeling of gratitude and reciprocity really is and how it strengthens your resilience. And maybe, just maybe, someone will follow in your footsteps. A very large segment of the Southwest Florida population does not have access to healing natural places or to any green space. We're all so fortunate. And kudos to Ding Darling for their wonderful offsite programs. And we need to continue to support that mission and we need to help others get outside so they can enjoy the healthy benefits nature has to offer for all of us. 
We also need to be aware of the reluctance of some who can't or don't want to venture into nature. Whether it's bugs or beasts or just conspiracies, help them set up an indoor nature scape with TV shows like Planet Earth, indoor plants, photographs, nature books. Help them realize the health benefits of nature. So in conclusion, by caring about yourself and indulging in mindful time in nature for self-care, nature can help us heal. And you will develop a deeper appreciation for nature, a deeper love of nature. And when you love something, you will want to help it. Notice the four legs there. And when you love something, you will want to help it. And we can help nature heal. We must help nature heal. Saving it for future generations to enjoy like we have so they can reap the healthy benefits of our beautiful island and this wildlife refuge. I'd like to end with a poem by Wendell Berry, The Peace of Wild Things. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests, in his beauty on the water, and the green heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars, waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I'm free. Thank you. <laughs> Questions, comments? There's a couple resources here. Uh, if you really want to learn about the science behind the health benefits of nature, uh, the best book out is Nature Fix by Florence Williams. Holly Merker, who spoke here uh, two years ago, published a book on ornotherapy, where birds can help with healing. Um, my website has a little bit of stuff on it. And uh, as I said, the best bet is to take a walk with these young ladies. Question. I was curious about the study specific to the, the pine and the scent of pine. Yes. So Dr. Lee took a group of 40 people, and he had a hunch what was going to happen. So he put 40 people in hotel rooms, and they had diffusers with hanaki oil, which is Japanese hemlock. And then he had 40 people in hotel rooms, no, no essential oil. And he measured and found this marked elevation of natural killer cells and all these other things. So then he took a group of people, walked them through the forest. And then he took the same group of people, walked them through the city. The people walking through the city did not have these elevations in natural killer cells and good hormones and whatnot. But the people who walked through the forest did. And he's repeated that several different times, trying to look at, well, how much of a dose do you need? How long do you need to be out there? Is it more than hanaki? Is it more than pine? And it is. And it might be as short as 20 minutes, a couple times a week. And how long does that last? So they measured. They kept measuring. How long do you think that lasts? You have good release of hormones how, after your time out on wildlife drive. 20 minutes a day? Up to a month. Oh, wow. Up to a month. Now, 20 minutes, it's kind of dose related. There's also studies that show that three days you get the highest and longest dose. So I do a lot of kind of three day immersions. I used to come down here on Friday morning, get out in my kayak, and be out there till Sunday night when I had to fly back to work. So 
there's something about that three day, you know, if you want the max dose, you don't need that. You just, you just need 20 minutes once or twice a week. How are you measuring it? Is it in the blood or is it blood pressure? All the above. So th there's a fascinating amount of research out there and they, they have done studies where they r check your heart rate variability, which shows that your heart functions better after you're out in nature, blood pressure, pulse, all those things. And then they do studies, they've done many studies where they take blood samples and they've measured these chemicals uh, in our blood. So they're objectively done. And then they do surveys, how do you feel? You know, everybody's happy. We all know we're all calmer and happier when, when we're out in nature, but, but we have scientific objective evidence that it happens. It's going to happen. Uh, when I did my morning walk today, I had to battle my monkey mind. And what I do is two things. I, and this is what's recommended by a lot of the mindfulness experts, you focus on breathing. So, you know, back in my surgery days, if I got into a stressful situation, I didn't start cussing. Instead, I just took some, did some box breathing, you know, took a deep breath. Um, and that's what I do out in nature. So if I'm out there enjoying the birds and all of a sudden I find myself thinking about the fracking in Ohio, I go back and just focus on breathing for a few seconds and then I can refocus on something in nature. So, you know, it's like the people who meditate in a room and they, you know, they hum or they stare at a dot on a wall or something. But nature, for me, brings, makes it so much easier. You know, there are so many good focal points in nature that can capture your, your mind and keep you centered on that beautiful moment or that beautiful sight, and it helps you from slipping back. But you will slip back, and you will start daydreaming or ruminating, and that's when you just focus on breathing. Yep. a muscle every time and every time you catch yourself thinking too like you're being mindful because you wouldn't be able to catch yourself drifting off if right. you weren't being aware of what's going on there. right so feeling good about it almost in a yeah way. you're right so i found myself and i right. find myself back yeah don't don't get angry at yourself for right. oh oh well, i shouldn't be thinking about that you know no just let it go So that's one of the uh, most common times. Ruminating at night is one of the most challenging uh, parts of mental health, if you, if you don't mind calling it that, or post-traumatic stress. You know, lo lack of sleep is part of the post-traumatic stress syndrome. So a good thing to do at night is to tune into Spotify, Dan Gibson. And, and he's got all kind of good stuff. Um, some people put on a fan noise. Or uh, at night, you can do a body scan. And you know, you start with the tension in your scalp and in your jaw, and you know, just kind of do a body scan as you're listening to night sounds, and uh, better than any sleeping pill. Or go sleep in a tent for three days. You'll sleep. <laughs> you'll, you'll sleep good. Not all of them good fortune to live in this beautiful sunset bird habitat. Are there other places you find that's tranquil or inspiring that you do here in Santa Fe? 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, two ways to answer that. For me, it's pretty easy. You know, give me a blade of grass or a tree or a blackbird or anything, and I can focus on that. But if you're asking me where my favorite spots are, uh, it depends on the season. And, you know, I just spent two weeks in the Appalachian Mountains and following my self prescribed 4 W pill. I have a vitamin I created in my mind, and it's made up of four W's. I go where there's waterfalls, where there's wildflowers, where there's warblers, and where there's wild trout. And if I take that in for a couple days, I'm good to go. So, you know, and you don't have to go to the wilderness. You don't have to go to Ding Darling. You know, you can do this looking out your window. You know, put a bird feeder out there or, uh, you know, plant some native plants and get, get some butterflies in your yard. Um, create your nature scape. You know, if you're living in the city where there's no green space, tune into planet Earth and, you know, get some good books and get a house plant. Anybody want to share a nature experience to help, you know, how, what, what's helped them since the hurricane? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you make a good point, because when I was 35 and had, you know, three kids in diapers and a busy practice, you know, it wasn't easy to, I didn't do three-day immersions. I, it, they may have been three minutes, but I, I realized that it was as important, you know, there are three legs to self-care. There are three pillars to self-care. Nutrition, exercise, and nature. And they're all equally important. And so, you know, you, we have to put ourselves first. We have to take care of ourselves. And if we don't, we're not going to be able to put our houses back together or take care of our families. So set aside that self-care time. And if you're here, why not turn to nature, boys? It's coming back. How about you, Jess? How do you how have you dealt with the stress? I did want to share something and you know, as a, a newer ranger, I started the mic. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess I can talk pretty loud. Just quickly. Um, again, that was beautiful. And as a new ranger, I started just before the hurricane officially of um, right around August. I was an intern about two years before, but I'm from Fort Myers. I was born here, been coming to Sandoval since I was a little baby. I remember Ranger Tony when she first started. All that being said, this island's so special and I can't really describe the feeling. I think that's the point of the, the emotion. It's hard to put it into words and words. Um, the feeling of how it felt on Sandoval after the hurricane. It was uh, autopilot mode, focus mode, staying really strong for each other. Once you think going on, don't even think about it. And it was so heartbreaking to see the change. You know, you expect to see all the same birds out there, and there was just not one single leaf. And I didn't realize how nature was my best friend in the whole world until it was taken away from me, I thought. I say this all the time, but I miss like the lush mangroves. Like I miss an old friend that I haven't seen in so long. And 
I've cried and I've been angry and I've cried with my friends and I've laughed with my friends, but something I would say when you ask the question about what nature can we see if we're not able to go to Ding Darling. Ding Darling doesn't look a whole lot, you know, like Ding Darling right now, but it's not, there's a quote, I don't know if it's Ding Darling, um, but it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. So also just challenging everybody to find the beautiful signs of resilience, the new leaves coming back, and just take a second to be grateful and look at that resilience and know that it's in all of us too. Nature is patient, and I just want to say thank you again because it is a strong message and we all need to share our stories with each other. Um, and nature is that beautiful place that we can all feel. So thank you so much. And um, yeah. did you want to say anything? Yeah. Are there any more questions or comments? Yeah, I have one. Yeah. So um, that is, um, I really appreciate you talking about mental health uh, and bringing it up because the sadness and grief that we've experienced as a community, I don't think it's really been addressed very much. It's a difficult thing to admit because we don't talk about it in our culture. Um, and Young Ranger, as I was thinking about, um, one my misplaced grief was about our loss of landscaping. So we had planted natives, we had been good stewards, and just because of the trajectory of the muck or whatever, it didn't matter. It was gone. We waited the months, we waited the months, and we did everything. Um, and I got really hung up on it. It was, I was much angrier and sadder, I think, about that than, than the seven feet of water in our house. So um, it's a work in progress, but one of the things, um, it probably has to do with my control freak tendencies too, is that I can help steward back our, our landscape in our yard. We have to start again from scratch, we'll do all the natives again, um, but watching all of that go from the you know, foot and a half of muck to slowly things coming back has been enormously restorative for me. Well, and you know, gardening. There's a a, a wealth of uh, research. There's a wealth of research on the health benefits of gardening, whether it's and and I'm like you. I'm kind of partial to native plantings. Um, so that's that's a great way to immerse yourself in nature and and help nature because you're feeding the insects that are desperately in trouble. struck me has been when I've been able to go to the ocean and just thinking about the waves as being a way of just washing away yeah. grief, fear, anxiety. And then the sea grapes. The sea grapes have been so amazing to me and how they have the resilience. And when I just watched them over a period of time of a little leaf sticking out of the trunk, and then now that's like a foot long. And, and what that really said to me was like, this resilience is literally coming from deep within. And then how that is for us is that we do have it deep within us and, and just digging in and capturing that. Um, you know, sometimes it's a reminder every day to try to do that. But when I see that, that's what it is speaking to me all the time. So. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess you can make an analogy and say if, if you're lucky to be like a native plant, like a sea grape, and have those deep roots, you're going you're gonna to recover. If you're like the invasive plants, you're going to struggle. They're still beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, all plants are beautiful. <laughs> all plants are beautiful. And, and, and a comment to feed on what you brought up about mental health mostly females here today. You know, us guys, we don't like to think we need help or we have post-traumatic stress. But, you know, when I drove across that causeway yesterday, I was reminded that, you know, I have post-traumatic stress. Every time I get on my boat, I'm reminded of my son and, and a dear friend I lost this year. Uh, so, you know, I, I have reasons to work on my, we all have reasons to work on the health of our brains. Um, and nature is such a good free medicine for that.
No side effects. Anything else? Well, thanks for coming. And uh, follow along with the mindfulness walks. They'll be, they'll be good.